Hi everyone, in today's video I'm back with my good friend Philip Hartness. It's been probably four and a half, five, maybe six weeks, I'm not really sure. In the first video, I had some colonies that had a lot of bearding, and he come over there to the bee vac when we thought we'd give it a shot, and he backed up some of the bees and, and tried to boost a couple of nukes with it to help them get going. Uh, they was kind of lagging behind, so as you can see right here in front of us, there's just one of those two nukes left. Philip, he would kind of explain what went on, what your experience was with this. Okay, Randall, I was in the midst of treating with the apron guard. I reckon that shut the queens down. Where we had this one, and then we had the one that was over here. After finishing my treatment, and I gave it about two more weeks of letting them recover and see and make an assessment, and I see that this one was just not building up like uh, it needed to be. And so, I made the decision to just combine the two, take the queen out, and I've got her in another hive, seeing if it might have been a queen problem, and haven't been in there since then on that one. But this one, I'm noticing the activity is picked up. When I checked last week, there was a little bit more brood, and I haven't checked it in a week's time, and so we're about to probably go in and and we're going to look and see and, and make a, a assessment on uh, are these going to make it or not. Awesome. So essentially, you just decided to go ahead and combine and get close yeah. to the end of the season. You want to have one good nook versus two, two, two nooks that's struggling, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, we sure would love to have a look in here. If All you right, give me just a few seconds. This is heavy with some nectar. Yeah, it is. Is there any brood up there? Uh, it's just speckled. Okay. Not nothing to really, and that may be cap, old capped honey. There's a the queen. Yep, there's the queen. She is up top. I'm gonna ease her back down there. Cause there's probably not that much for room for her to lay up top. They're still putting some nectar in. There's a bee with some big balls of pollen there. If you can see that, there's quite a bit of nectar they're bringing in. And down at the bottom, is a bee with balls of pollen on its back legs. So Philip, I noticed right off there's not a huge population in here, but this is one of the common traits of new oral carniolians is yes. you have to get used to if you're used to Italians is there's, there's not going to be a huge population there coming into winter. Well, let's, let's take a look if you want to, Randall, and see what's below. Okay. And then if there's more room for the queen to lay, we may try to see if we can find her again. If we don't disturb her from her position. So now we're down in the bottom of the double stack nuke. And we're going to pull out some frames down here and see what kind of brew pattern we have. It's pretty nice. The other, there's some cap brood. And up above it, right in here, is some pollen and nectar around that frame. So it seems like we're kind of in the peak of goldenrod right now. And, and yep. they've got a good bit of pollen stored in that frame. And I see a few bees in there with it pollen on them so that's yeah. very good. I think this colony looks pretty good. Right there a bee and right there is a bee with beautiful balls of pollen. There is some cap brood. There's different stages of eggs and larvae and nectar on this side and on this side there is more cap brood in stages of larvae and eggs. If these other frames are like it, I can understand why the queen's up top now. Yeah, it looks good. And, and a lot of those bees right there that, that's under those cappings and those larvae are, are, are going to be the bees that get this colony through winter. That, that should be your winter bees. The main thing is getting them with right now the proper nutrition. There's some more cap brood. Randall, double check my vision. 
I, I don't have my reading glasses on and I can't tell if there's eggs in that frame or not. The bottom of the sails. Yeah, there's eggs. Is it loaded? Yeah. Okay. Here's some with nectar. It's empty. So we found a cap queen cell here. Right here where my thumb is. Randall, your opinion. Let nature take its course. Oh, that's a that's a good question. I, I hate seeing those this time of the year. Yeah. Um, and there may be a reason. You know, we did order these queens. Yeah, it is. And we know the queen is the queen that we ordered in there, as we saw her a few minutes ago. What I would be concerned about is there enough drones still left for her to get a quality mating and get her pheromones going over the next two to three weeks because that's basically what time she has left. That's a hard call to make. Because I, I really don't know. Yeah, I, I really don't either. I've really, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't think I've ever saw a cat queen cell this late. I would probably tear it out if it was me. Since we got a good laying queen. Yeah, and that may may not be the right decision. And all we can do is make our best judgment and see what happens. All right. But I'm certainly not trying to encourage you to do that. I'm just saying that's probably what I would do. Now, if this was two months ago, or you know, even four weeks ago, I'd probably just let it go and let, let nature take its course. So with the population we have here, Philip has decided to go ahead and combine this down by taking the best frame, a couple of frames from the top, putting it down here below. And that'll help this corneolin stop over winter better in this tighter cavity. And right now, all I'm doing is trying to get all the bees out of this box. And all these frames that's got capped honey and nectar, I'll set them to the side and let the bees clean them up. Well, Philip, you got your coffee here condensed down into one. Uh, what's your thoughts on this experiment? Well, Randall, I, I believe it will work. Doing the mite treatment, that's something I would probably would do different. I would hold off doing a mite treatment. Yeah. I believe it shut the queen down. And it set them back a little bit even though I did have to wind up combining the two and then even though condensing it down, I just, I wanted to make sure that they can make it through the winter. Yeah. And so this is something I would, I would do again. And if all the condition is correct, maybe a, a couple of weeks earlier would, would have been a better factor. Yeah, I, I agree. And from what I could see in there, it looked to me like there was enough bees to kind of get it going. And most likely, almost all those bees I recently, we originally brought over here are gone by now, but there's a nice brood nest in this one colony here. And I think it's going to pan up well for you for the winter. It looks yep. good. And I've done something similar to this in my nukes back in June or July where I was having trouble getting enough nurse bees. I, ha I had to go down there and find a couple of colonies that was bearding. And I just simply raked some off in a container, but they were pretty flighty. And, and the idea behind us vacuuming at this time was to try to have better control over those bees and keep them contained. contained. Yeah. yeah. So I think this is a pretty decent procedure to do this to boost a colony like that if you're making a nuke. Well, Philip, I've enjoyed this little experiment. I appreciate you taking the time and, and letting us see this experiment with your bees. I appreciate your help and for the bees. You're very welcome. This is how we learn if you work together with beekeepers in your region, make good friends and you can learn from each other and compare notes and me and Philip has been doing that for several years. Well, hey, I want to thank you for joining us today for this video and we'll catch you on the next one.